welcome back to Ohms Under The Hammer. If you're new here to the channel, hit the thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and you can hit the bell icon and I'll notify you every time I upload. Today's video is gonna be about a progress update for my eight bed HMO here in Welling. You can see from behind me, we're making absolutely fantastic progress. Let me show you on round. So the block work is fully complete here and we've fully constructed the roof actually as well. So all the timbers and joists are all in for ceiling and you can currently see there that we are stripping the existing roof tiles off uh, as we're going to be replacing the roof completely. Uh, doors and windows should be arriving within the next hour and I'll uh, hopefully show you a bit of imagery of that as well. Um, yeah, so the, the plan really at the moment is for the next week is to try and get this building watertight, um, which will be a, a great milestone to achieve. Uh, there's still lots of work here to get on with, but we are making really good progress and I'm very happy so far. One of the hardest things in property development is keeping um, all the staff members motivated and uh, on task. And the way I do that is using a schedule of works so that they know week by week what their, their aims and, and their, their, their targets are to try and achieve. At the moment I think I've got five or six guys here on, on site and we're, we're uh, stripping back the roof, we're planning to get new felt and batten all on the roof to get the roof side uh, watertight. Once the windows and doors arrive next week we'll be looking to fit all of those and, and those will all be fitted ourselves to keep the cost down. Um, so yeah it's, it's making really good progress. Let's, let's pop on upstairs, um, we'll go up the scaffolding and I can show you up there exactly what we've been doing. You're a tit. <laughs> would you prefer having my name on your t-shirt or would you prefer to have Eddie the Builder there? No, right? Ohms <laughs> under the hammer's perfect, thank you. <laughs> right, so we're up here at roof level. You pay the wages, isn't <laughs> That's correct, I do pay the wages. We're up here at roof level and... And it's really good wages, I have my, to say. Yeah. My dad is a little bit livid with me, to be honest with you, because I had a few quotes back from some roofers and I sort of fell off my chair when I saw him and I said, Dad, we've got to do something here. And he sort of looked at me and thought, you're not going to try and get me to do the roof thing. And I said, to be honest with you, Dad, would you give it a go? And what did you say back? I'll give it a bash. <laughs> so, yeah. so, never done it before, but we are going to attempt to, to tile the roof, felt and batten and tile the roof ourselves. We might have a little bit of difficulty with some of the lead work and bits and pieces like that, no, but we're we'll, going to give it a go. We'll, we? we'll give it a go, definitely. And that should save me an absolute fortune, which means I've got a little bit more in the kitty to do some of the other things here that I want to do to the property. So uh, last time we had a little chat about this roof area that we've constructed, we were up to plate level, which is just here. We've now constructed this whole uh, new roof uh, and we're literally ready for felt and batten. Literally another sort of day or so, we should have this water tight. Right, so these are the existing tiles that are on the roof and we did actually attempt to get, try and give them a bit of a clean uh, to see if we could salvage them and then refit the new tiles uh, to match these. But to be honest with you, that didn't really work out to plan. Plus they're a bit of a pain in the ass to fit these and we're not, we're not roofers. So we've decided to get rid of these. Uh, sorry, we've not decided to get rid of them. We've decided to take them down, salvage them and recycle them. And, recycle them and, and we've got someone who's gonna come and pick up uh, all of them and purchase them from us because they can be reused on another site. But to make dad's life easier, which I'm sure he's gonna be happy with, uh, as he didn't really want to do the roof in the first place, but um, we decided to go for an interlocking tile, which as you can see, are much larger, easier to fit, and um, will give us the look of, I suppose, that what, what's over there on that property, uh, but a, a dark gray, which should match the nice anthracite gray windows and doors that we're fitting here in the property. Um, anything you want to add to that with this tile? Yeah, what I want to add to um, this about this tile is that the, existing neighbors uh, tiles will butt up and interconnect with this tile perfectly so you should get a smooth rather yeah. than have uh, uh, like a ridge tile separating the two properties you just have a nice smooth between their roof and ours obviously ours will look better and just to add to that are you going to do a dry fix system or a cement based i know no. you've been watching some youtube stuff and looking at roofs I've, everywhere i've purchased it already it's dry mate dry, dry system okay. yeah dry fix so no cement work so only on the very very ends yeah. you have some cement holding well it'd, it'd be good to show the youtube viewers uh, i'm not sure if anyone is planning to do their own roof but it'd be good to show them 
how we do that and if it's successful or um, if we have to get someone in to help us. Hopefully not. Do we have to? <laughs> yeah. So we're up here in what's going to be the loft space. Um, and as you can see, uh, it's really coming along. This has been the home of my ma master carpenter uh, for the last week or so, and he's doing a fantastic job. Um, the plan really is to try and get this bit now the way. We're trying to change some of the joists on the existing roof, which aren't matching up with our current ones because they're a little bit bowed. Um, so, so that's the plan at the moment. If you look over here as well, you'll notice that um, we've got all the tiles coming off of the roof, which we mentioned. You can see that's, that's uh, looking nice. All of the battens need to come off and the felt. And the reason that um, we're taking those off is because they are for the smaller tile. We need to reposition the battens so that they uh, fit for the interlocking tile that we're putting on. So lots of work up here. Let me show you on downstairs inside the property so you can get a feel for the space that we're creating. So we're inside the property in the new extension. Um, it's a big old space that we've created. None of the uh, stud walls are up yet or the, the, the new walls to divide the space. If I give you a rough idea of what we're doing. In that far corner over there will be a kitchen. It will have floor to ceiling units um, and then it will have um, an island there in the middle, a set of double doors at the back. Um, and the kitchen will be suitable for the, the number of people that are going to live here. We're going to have eight bedrooms, so we need two hops, two ovens, two fridge freezers, two, two of everything pretty much to make sure there's sufficient um, space and um, appliances for them. Then in this section here behind me, there's actually going to be a wall. There'll be um, a big old table and a kind of seating area for food. We'll have a television on the wall there. And so you can imagine right here, there's going to be a big old wall. The space I'm in right now is going to be a bedroom. In that space over there at the front is also going to be a bedroom. So this space is being divided into two bedrooms and there will be a shared bathroom in between. Now these two bedrooms in the property are the only bedrooms that have a shared bathroom. All other six bedrooms will have en suites, which are probably going to be the rooms that are going to let easier than these two. But um, I couldn't get that extra en suite in, which is a little bit frustrating. So it's eight bedrooms, seven bathrooms. Let me show you inside as well and you can see how the layout is being uh, configured. So another bedroom here, and this, this bedroom will have an ensuite. Um, not one of the biggest bedrooms, but still a good size. The ensuite will also be functional. The rooms will all be uh, really, really nice and comfortable for the people living here. If I just take you through here. This section here at the moment isn't constructed, but this is actually going to be a little bit of a utility room. So we're going to have washing machines in here and we're going to, we're going to nick a little bit of space from this room. So we're going to kind of stud petition this area here, make sure it's all soundproofed so that we can have a bit, a bit more of a utility space. And then this part here like that is going to be another ensuite. This is a good size room. A um, lot of work to still do in this room. And there's lots of soundproofing here to do in this property because it's a large HMO, you have to make sure that all the tenants um, have adequate soundproofing so that they're kind of uh, comfortable here and living and pass two sound tests at the end, which I think I mentioned before. Follow me on upstairs. We're back to brick pretty much everywhere because the plaster was in quite bad condition. Um, chimney stacks are coming out. This one is still to come out. We've taken the stack out from the roof level, but we still need to take the internal stack out. Again, this is going to be a bedroom with an ensuite, um, it'll have a wardrobe, it'll have a desk, it'll have a nice television, it'll have all the things that you'd want for modern living. Um, again, follow me over here. Nice big space, bedroom, ensuite. And then the other bedrooms are going to be uh, one, one bedroom out there. And so, so that's how all the bedrooms are being formed. Um, lots of people with HMOs think that you're going to kind of create rabbit hutches and they're not going to be nice spaces. I've tried to make sure all the bedrooms are a really good size and that they will create really nice places for people to live and have cheap rent uh, if they can't afford to, to get themselves their own property. And uh, I think HMOs are really good for nurses, for students, for working professionals that you know don't want to go and rent a flat for a thousand pound a month plus council tax plus uh, gas electric and all that sort of stuff so my rooms are inclusive of bills um, and I've already put an advert up to kind of check the t tenant demand in this area and I think I've had over a hundred inquiries just off the, the initial advert that I've put up so I, I know I'm not gonna have any issues uh, issues letting these eight rooms let me know what you think of today's video thank you for watching and I'll catch you soon
it, fill it, fill it, fill it, fill it. You break it, you pay for it. Lunch time! Alright, man.